So the NADH produced by glycolysis uh, cannot pass through the impermeable inner membrane of the mitochondria. NADH is a, very, is a large molecule, so it is impermeable to the very dense inner membrane of the uh, mitochondria. So instead, there must be an alternative route for the electrons of NADH to be transported into the ETC cycle. And in this case, we have the glycerol 3-phosphate shuttle. And in this mechanism, we have the NADH, uh, the electrons of NADH added onto dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So dihydroxyacetone phosphate is one of the intermediates of glycolysis. When uh, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is split in half, we get glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and dihydroxyacetone. In glycolysis, this dihydroxyacetone isn't useful, so we convert it into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. But over here, we are actually using that dihydroxyacetone phosphate to gain glycerol 3-phosphate. And it is important to note that this glycerol 3-phosphate is not the same as the G3P in glycolysis. The G3P in glycolysis is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, whereas this is glycerol 3-phosphate. So dihydroxyacetone gains the two uh, electrons from NADH, and NADH is oxidized into NAD+, and dihydroxyacetone becomes glycerol 3-phosphate. So we see the gain of the two hydrogens where we used to have this uh, double-bonded oxygen. So this uh, glycerol 3-phosphate is able to transport those two hydrogens onto an enzyme that is bound to the inner membrane of the mitochondria. And that enzyme is called the mitochondrial glycerol 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. So this enzyme is bound to the inner membrane on the intermembrane space side. So this is the intermembrane space side, and this is the matrix. This enzyme is bound on the inner membrane P side. And then glycerol 3-phosphate is able to pass those two hydrogens that it got from the NADH onto an FAD that is bound to this enzyme. So once FAD gains those two hydrogens, it becomes reduced to FADH2, FADH2. And FADH2 is able to pass those two hydrogens onto ubiquinone, and the reduced version of ubiquinone is referred to as ubiquinol. So this QH2 has become ubiquinol, and the ubiquinol will pass on those, uh, will pass through to complex number three. So this mechanism is very similar to what we see on complex number two in the ETC cycle. In the ETC cycle, on complex number, uh, complex number two, we have a transporter called succinate dehydrogenase, which also has an FAD bound to it, and that FAD becomes reduced into FADH2, and it passes on uh, its electrons to ubiquinone to make ubiquinol. So this is a very similar mechanism to that mechanism, which we see on complex number two of the ETC. So once again, we had this dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which was able to gain the hydrogens. So NADH was oxidized into NAD+. We gained glycerol 3-phosphate, which gained those two hydrogens, passed it on to FAD. We get the reduced version, which is FADH2. FADH2 passes it on to coenzyme Q, which is uh, also called ubiquinone, and then we get ubiquinol, which is the reduced version of ubiquinone, and then it goes further into complex number three. And that is the glycerol 3-phosphate shuttle, the alternative route to transport the electrons on NADH and get it into the ETC to utilize it to make ATP, because this NADH from glycolysis is impermeable to the inner membrane of the mitochondria.